Today we're at Bolton Road for Ipswich Town versus Stoke. Good morning legends. Welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Link. And Ipswich Town today play Stoke. First league home game of the season. It is NWO sold out. And um, the weather is beautiful as you can see. And um, yeah, we're going to watch football. But England ladies play this morning. So because of that, I'm now going to the shop to get something to eat before I go out. Because I'm going to go watch the England ladies game down the pub. So um, I need to eat something first. Because it's a weird time. It's not like 11, half 11. So yeah, let's go to the shop. Carl has Prime in a meal deal. That is a win, isn't it? It was so busy in there, it's not even like funny. And also, although they have Prime, it's 250 instead of 199. So like Tesco's is 199, that's 250, but it's cold for you, isn't it? Also, I currently sit 15th for 20 in the Lynx Legends Fantasy League. I know there's only been one game and that was Man City. <sighs> it's not fun, but also, shout out to Harry, who triple captained Haaland. What a ballsy move for week one to just like stick yourself in the lead and then try and stay there, I guess. I respect them. Also, shout out to Jimmy Barnes with Hugo Lloris in goal. What is that about? But I don't think he really understands the rules, but um, his channel is brilliant. If you like music and stuff and Funko Pops, go check my boy Jimmy out because he's a good laugh. But yeah, it is time for me to go to breakfast. So I'm drinking Red Bull and Jack Daniels because I'm very tired. And we're watching um, the England Ladies show. So we've just left the pub. England women won 2-1. Um, it was quite a good game, actually, for a women's game. Um, I do try and watch a bit of women's football, but it's not as good, but the standards get better like every week, basically, which is like every month, every year. So it's good to see it prove, but um, it's good for England to win. Arsenal winning 2-0. Everyone that scored isn't in my fantasy team, so that's not good. I need habits to score now, but yeah, we can go get some food on way because we're starving. So Chris just asked for my score prediction, and um, I hadn't made one in the vlog yet, so I thought I'd better share it with you as well. So I've gone for two no Ipswich. I'm going to go for two second half goals from Freddie Ladapo. <laughs> you might have heard Chris laugh in the background there, and um, Chris has gone for two on Ipswich. Have you got goal scorers, Chris? No, so Fred Lillapa will score two in Chris's prediction as well. So the pre-match meal is a Greg's because I wanted pizza. So it had to be done. On our way through the car park into the stadium now. It's getting exciting now. There's a queue to get into the pub store. I've only ever seen that at Anfield, so it was such a massive. <laughs> So we've got flame cannons out. Um, apparently it's really hot in my seat when the cannon's out, so I'm looking forward to that. I can't work up where the gas is though, like, I see there's like a pipe, but like, where's the gas for it? Like, there's no gas bottle. I don't know, I'm fascinated. So the Stoke team's warming up, including Kiana, whoever, who used to play for Liverpool. So I know there's a lot of Liverpool fans watching the channel. I'm sure you'll be excited to watch him today and see how good he is. Got the Rondo on. It looks like a real good intensity for like... Not even started yet. They've got the spare balls and they're fizzing them back in. They're not worried about the other ones. So. Whoever looks good as well. Oh, the ball. I just want to give a shout out to the Stoke fans. Look at this. Look at all them. Like, I think they've sold out their allocation, maybe. Like, 3,000 or one. Really impressive, you know. It's a long way to go to Stoke. So, respect to them for that. And also, I could hear them as I was walking to the game, which you've got to, you know, that's always a good song. You can hear the away fans as well. see as well they moved the singing section right up there so 
all the sort of singing instrument bands are up there now instead of in the lobby at the other end, which is an interesting change to try and hopefully get the atmosphere going right across the stadium. The team is about to come out. And this place is buzzing, but especially up there, so loud. So loud. The flame cannon's got a little warning sign on now because it's going to burn soon. Honestly, they're having the best time ever up there. Also, I'm finding it amazing how many people are wearing an orange shirt. Right? Everywhere you look, it looks like there's loads of stewards in the crowd. Trent's understudy once upon a time, you know? Yeah. Whoever too much, but I know Liverpool fans watch this channel a lot as well. And here's just play the ball literally 30 yards to the start of the On the half volley, ridiculous. Whoever's just won the ball literally from two points. God, I'm starting to fan a little bit. So we've played 20 minutes and Stoke just basically keep breaking it, such momentum with like little fouls and stuff. Um, they've only had one player booked, it could have been a couple more really, but um good start from it, but I would say um, whoever for Stokes probably been the best player in the park. Channel one it up, Wolfie scores. And Stokes goes very quiet. Come on in, Trent. Stokes are bringing on Wesley for Chikini already. Right. I don't know if it's an injury, but he doesn't play very well. That's one one. So seven minutes into the second half, and he's getting a bit nervy. Stoke putting more and more pressure on him. Another corner now. He's killed him. Back he's been put for time wasting when he's taking a free kick. He's just a bit nervy. That'll help. For a second off, he's had a penalty, but it's a free kick and right on the end. But it's a really good position to it. I think we'd really take pressure off to get another roll. Come on, go. Come on, it's So I just got really excited because I saw that um, George Hurst was coming off and I thought my boy Caden Jackson was coming on. But um, that's Caden Jackson instead. No idea why they have done that. Broad heads off as well for Harmish. Also, I just had a Twitter notification saying Liverpool have finished the deal for Casado or for Brizzo Romano. I'm not sure if it's like a troll for Brizzo Romano account, and I've got no signal, so I can't check. And I'm like, twenty nine thousand and six pounds, one thousand seven hundred forty nine stokes. Town are paying for something over there. 
nothing but quite careless one as well, but hasn't really done anything. So I take it back about Caden Jackson. I know I said I wanted a Dapo to come on, but um, Caden Jackson's the one that just scored, so fair play to McKenna. This is a one. Great result. And it's a good stoke side. I was always, I give you my full analysis when I get home, but what an it. Atmosphere when you leave after a win like that's great. You can take that shit right now. So I'm back home and um, did someone say top of the league? Ipswich, top of the league, Ipswich, Ipswich, top of the league. Automatic promotion's coming, um, I don't know, I hope so. I did. I predicted they'll finish in the top four, uh, probably fourth, but it looked good. You know, We made Stoke look, look, you know, not average, I think that's probably a stretch, but we made Stoke look... Um, like they weren't special when they are a decent championship side, a well established championship side at that level. Um, obviously, bet Sunderland the week before. I think there's another great performance. And also, bringing on Caden Jackson for that pace in behind was absolutely the right decision. In the stadium, I was like, I got excited. I thought my mate Fred was coming on, but bringing on Caden Jackson for that pace in behind as Stoke come forward, the pace in behind to use that space was just the right idea and that's why Harness come on I assume as well for Broadhead just for that little bit of extra legs and also Hutchinson at the end um, but yeah it was absolutely brilliant um, Cragley what a player he was in goal he didn't make no mistakes he made some good saves um, his distribution was a bit better this week a bit more confident not as bad as he was last week uh, yeah I just think honestly it was all round really good from Ipswich Town um, as a Liverpool fan, as you all know, I really enjoyed watching Keyan or whoever. Um, he, he was, he is, you could see the class he's got. Um, he's still a young player, and I'm sure he will be back in the Premier League one day. I'm absolutely like confident of that. Um, Moore's he got man of the match in the stadium. I would give it to Wolfie because he was relentless in keeping the clean sheet. He was really good building up from the back, and he scored the opening goal. So. Like, what more can you ask from a centre-back than that? Um, so, for me, man of the match is Wolfie. But, as always, put your comment down below of who was man of the match. And um, if anyone wants to comment, key, Anna, whoever, I'm not going to argue with you. And it's just it's just fun, you know. Obviously, I'm a Liverpool fan and I, I love it. Switch, I have Ipswich season ticket. But, if you cut me, I bleed red, you know. And, um, yeah, it was, just, it was just fun. I had a great day out. And to walk home, you know, went to the pub, had a few drinks. And to come home and just look at the league... And see Ipswich chop is brilliant. Only slight sour point was that Caicedo news. Like I got trolled by like a fake Fabrizio Romano account for some reason. Twitter or X, whatever the hell we're supposed to call it now, Elon, give me a notification for a fake Fabrizio Romano tweet. And basically, what happened was I got it, and then I tried to open the tweet like from the notification, which deleted the notification, so I couldn't look at it. But I couldn't find the tweet because it wouldn't load. So I got rid of the notification. I couldn't load that particular tweet. And I'm sat there thinking, has Fabrizio Romano just tweeted, here we go, Liverpool have done the Casado deal. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my God, I cannot reload it. So I end up sending a text message to Amy, who was at home, to ask her to just double check for me. And um, bless her, she checked really quick. So thank you, Amy. But oh, I was fuming. Honestly, I was absolutely fuming because I got absolutely done by that. So whoever made that troll Twitter account, GG. Let me know what you thought of the game today in the comments. Let me know who was your man of the match. Give the video a thumbs up. Um, if there's any Stoke fans watching this, um, respect to you for how you all conducted yourselves today. It's great to see a following with that many fans come along and just be in good spirit and to, uh, you know, want to win, but not be like disgusting fans. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just. They conducted themselves really well and they sort of followed their team in a really positive way. And I'll be honest, some of my favourite fans that have been to Portman Road were, were the Stoke fans. They were so loud, but so positive. It wasn't like a nasty energy. So, yeah, all I can say is, like, respect to them, respect to them. It's a long way to go. 
and um yeah just fair play really and um i guess i'm gonna end the vlog there thank you so much for watching remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more football vlogs um i have an ipswich season ticket so we go to a lot of ipswich games and um if i get lucky in some of the ballots which i haven't so far we'll hopefully be at some liverpool ones this season as well all this has to say is i've been link you've been my legends i love you all and i'll see you all real soon up at town thanks so much for watching today guys if you've enjoyed that you can click up here and you can watch another video of mine or if you really love it if you really really love it or even if you just like it a little bit go down here and subscribe to the channel it means you'll never ever miss what is coming up real soon <laughs>